from KKK or Kamau Karumba Kiroko to come and share the word of God and all his names are Christian. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. It is such a joy to see all of you. It is such a joy to know that we serve a mighty God. He is God Almighty and there is nothing impossible with him. Now that I am here and the presence of God is here and you are here to receive, I am sure the Lord is going to unlock blessings in your life, things that you have waited for a long time. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, this is my day. I am ready to receive from the Lord God Almighty. You will see it, you will hear it, and you will enjoy it. Amen. You may sit down. Uh, for those that uh, probably have not encountered me, uh, not met me, just encountered me, uh, my names are Karumba Kamau Kiroko. And as Bishop has rightly said, those are my Christian names. I do not want to give, I do not want to give anybody or any other people the benefit of calling me by their names so that I can be a Christian. That is for another day. But the Lord has been good to me. I have come to tell you this. That since the days of my teenage years, I have known the faithfulness of God. And I can stand and confidently tell you that God is faithful to those who seek him and wait upon him. And I can say like David, I was younger. I will not say like David that I was young because I'm still young. I can only say I was younger and now I am seasoned a little bit but I have never seen the righteous forsaken by the Lord because the Lord has been on my side. Many are the battles, but through those battles, I have grown up. I have matured. The people that were with me in the rings, they made me stronger. And so don't feel give up and don't feel bad that you have a battle or two to fight because the Lord is good and the Lord fights all your battles. Receive greetings from Atlanta, Georgia where me and my wife live and where we minister and that is the place there and where we are driving. Amen? Because the Bible says him that is planted in the house of the Lord shall thrive in the courts of his God. It is good to be planted somewhere. As I called Bishop, I told him I am coming to Bethel. You know when God appeared to Abraham, there is a place that Abraham usually resorted to and built an altar. And many times he went back there. And so when I come here, I feel very charged. I feel very good. I feel very inspired. And I love it. And so I am in my bed there and I love the Lord for what he has done. So my wife and I live in Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, my daughter and her husband and our grandchildren, they live there. And uh, the other son lives in California. And the other one in Canada and his family. As you have noted, in between there is one uh, who lives with himself. And for all those things, that is where he is for this time. And he's looking. Amen. And he should be coming around to look around again. Praise be to the Lord. I thank God for what God is doing in my life and in your life. Because seeing you today is a testimony. That God has a project with you. God has an assignment with you. And because you have believed God, the Bible says in the book of John, uh, chapter 1, that 
He came to his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him, he gave them the power to become the sons of God. And therefore this morning, I am talking to a people that belong to a kingdom. I am talking to a people that belong to a territory. I am talking to a people that belong to a spiritual location where God locates them. And even where their enemies located them. And it is a place called the kingdom of God. Where God himself reigns and rules. Now in that kingdom, there are some prerequisites or requirements for you to be able to function fully, enjoy life fully, and have access to all that you need for, this, for godliness and for this life. Remember what the Lord spoke to us sometimes back. That all things have been given to us. But now, something comes into my mind. Whenever I have traveled, I remember twice I have traveled to Uganda. And in my travel, immediately I crossed the border. I realized that I needed to buy something or to pay a taxi. But in order for me to do that, I needed some currency. And so immediately I left Kenya and arrived in Uganda. I needed to change my Kenyan shillings to the Ugandan currency so that I can have access to the things that I needed. And equally true when I went to Canada, I realized also they have the same requirements. That whenever you cross the boundaries and you go to a particular territory, you need what they call money for you to be able to have access to a drink, to accommodation, to food, and whatever else that you might need. Now, in the kingdom of God, remember you belong to the kingdom of darkness. Remember you did not belong to the commonwealth of God. But when you believed in Jesus Christ, which is a desire and a plan for all of us, that each one of us should have their identity in the kingdom of God. That immediately you transitioned and you landed in that kingdom. When you say, Jesus, come into my heart. When you landed into that kingdom, something happened. You needed what we'd call currency to function properly and fully in that kingdom. And that currency is faith. Because what is currency? Currency is a legal tender. Something given to you. Although it is a piece of paper, although it is a piece of coin, it has authority in its own jurisdiction. Now for you as a son of God, in the kingdom of God, there is a currency you have been given. And that currency is called faith. Your faith is your legal tender that gives you access to your healing. It gives you access to your health. It gives you access to your wealth. It gives you access to your knowledge. It gives you access to everything that you need for this life. Because the difference between you and anybody else is you, that you have put your faith in God through Jesus Christ. And when you have put your faith in God through Jesus Christ, that means you have access to the inheritance of God. You have access to your wholeness. And because you have access to your wholeness, remember this, there is nothing else that makes you a believer. It is your faith in Jesus Christ. You are a believer. You belong to the kingdom. One, because you believed in Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ came into your heart. And you were authenticated as a child of God. As a son of the kingdom. Because of your faith in Jesus Christ. You never forget that. 
that you belonged and now you belong. It would be unwise for you to be in another country. And you'll be still carrying the Kenyan currency. You will go hungry. You go naked. You'll be destitute. No wonder a lot of people in the Christian faith are suffering, are undernourished, are underfed, are poor because they do not use the appropriate currency for, that, for the kingdom of God. And that is our faith. In the book of Isaiah chapter 51, the Bible says, Listen, you lands. Listen, you lands. Listen to me, you who follow after righteousness. You who seek the Lord, look to the rock from which you are hewn, and to the hole of the pit from which you are dug. Look, it says, pay attention. The people that pay attention, they know their times. The people that pay attention, they know their seasons. The people that know their, their the people that pay attention, they know their direction. They don't just stumble into things. They know where they are going. They know that the hand of God is upon their lives. Because they have a connection with God and they are confident. And they can say like Ezekiel, when the heavens were opened before me, I knew the hand of God was upon my life. And when the hand of God is upon your life, let me tell you, you are unstoppable. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you are unstoppable. Turn to your neighbor and tell your neighbor, I am unstoppable because the hand of God is upon my life. And so do not forget that God called Abraham and the Bible says, I called him alone. Do not forget where you came from. Do not forget where you came from. Do not even forget the pit from which we are dying. And then he said, after that, look to Abraham, who is the father of our faith. Because the Bible says, God called him alone. Even if you are married or single in a group, remember that God called you alone. To increase you, to bless you, and to increase you. Let me emphasize that God's agenda number one in your life is not to work for Him. God does not need deliverers. God needs people that want to be blessed. God needs people that want to plant themselves and plant their lives in Him. So that he can bless them. The Bible says, I called him alone. And when I called him alone, I blessed him and increased him. That is God's agenda in your life. God wants to bless you. God wants to increase you. God wants to prosper you. God wants to establish you in his kingdom. In order for you to be established in his kingdom. What needs to be done, what needs to, be, to happen is that you need to have your wallet full. You need to have a full wallet. You need to have your currencies packed. Because challenges of life will come. And when challenges of life will come, the only weapon you have is your faith, which is your currency in Jesus Christ. Your faith is your weapon. Your faith is your key. When the enemy comes to you, you tell them, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I nullify your schemes. I challenge your advancement to me in Jesus' name. And it doesn't matter how long it has been. Remember the blight 
the, remember the lame man that was lying by the beautiful gate in Acts chapter 3. That man had been there, the Bible says, he was lame from his birth. But when Peter and John came, they said, in the name of Jesus Christ, by your faith, in the faith of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. It doesn't matter how long your problem or your challenge has been. Because our God is a good God. And our faith in God is so precious that I would give anything for my faith. But thank God for the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. That I do not have to give my life. It is already given. That I did, don't have to give my wealth. Because it is not mine. After all, it all belongs to God. I only have to know that I'm a steward. And whatever is mine, or whatever I am allowed to use, I use. Whatever does not belong to me, I don't steal it. I let it go back to the owner, because it is not mine. And so our God is good, and it is by faith that he wants us to do that. By faith, he says, it is by faith that we have access to God's inheritance. The Bible says, Abraham, I called him alone. And what did Abraham do? When Abraham was called of God, the Bible says he answered the call. He responded. It, is, it behooves us, or it is upon us to respond by faith to the challenges that we get and to the challenges that we receive every day because our God does not change. The challenges of our everyday life changes. But when challenges change, our God remains the same. And because our God remains the same, whatever challenge it comes, our almighty God is bigger than our problems. He is bigger than our challenges. In the book of Numbers chapter 23, and verse 19. The Bible says, Let all men be liars, but let God be true. Whatever he says he will do, he will do it. Whatever he has spoken, it will be done. Why? Because he does not change. Our God does not change. The God that was with Elijah when he faced the prophets of Baal. He's the same God that you and I believe in. He's the same God that rains fire from heaven and consumes his enemies. He is the same God that leads me by the still waters. He is the same God that guides me. He is the same God that makes ensures that I never lack. He is the same God that touches my body and heals me and sets me straight. That is my God, and that is your God. He is a good God. Our God is a good God. And because he's a good God, and he does not change, it is only ourselves who need to increase our level of faith. That will be proportionate to the problems that we face every day. Because God wants to do Miracles in your life. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 8. That Jesus is the same. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday. That means Jesus Christ is the same in the past. He never changes. And today he is. And he's not going to change. And he will be like that forever. That means Jesus wants to work in your life like he worked when, when he was walking on earth in his physical body. And he wants to deliver you. He wants to set you free. But you must believe that he is. The question is, are you believing God for your miracle. Are you believing God for your miracle? 
Are you believing God for your deliverance? Are you believing God for your healing? Because faith in Jesus Christ and the power of God is present to deliver you. The power of God is present to set you free. The power of God is present to heal you and to prosper you. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now you prepare to come and receive your blessing and receive the power that you need to confront your challenges. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 that he who comes to God must believe that God is. That means the existence of God, the creator of heaven and earth, the ruler of the kingdom to which you belong is not questionable. And because that God is not questionable, he is not Allah. He is not Buddha. He is not any of those Eastern gods. But he is God, the creator of heaven and earth. The one who revealed himself through the person of Jesus Christ. And when he revealed himself to Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, our God and my God can never be domesticated. Not by a theologian. Not by a pastor. Not by a rabbi. Not by a priest. My God cannot be domesticated by anybody. Theologians have tried to domesticate God in doctrines. And they have given institutions dead religion. They have not believed in miracles and power of God to heal. But the Bible says, our God never changes. And because he does not change, whatever he did for others, he can do for you. Whatever God did for others, he can do for you. When he calls you, because he has called every believer, so that he can bless you, so that it increase you. And because he wants to increase you, when you believe that he exists, the Bible says, we must also believe, Hebrews 11 and verse 6, that we must, that he who comes to God must, but without faith it is impossible to please God. Can you imagine? That without faith, God is angry. Without faith, God is not amused by whatever you do. He is not amused by your tithes. He is not amused by your gifts. But without, because without faith, you don't move God. Without faith, you don't access. Without the legal tender, you don't access the heavenly throne. But with the legal tender, you are able to go to the heavenly throne and demand you are right. By faith, you go to God. And give him the mandate to come and function and stand in for you. The Bible says that without faith, it is impossible to please God. Because he who comes must believe. Faith is not an option. Believing is not an option. Believing is mandatory for you to be able to receive from God. And he says he must believe. That God is able. Our God is able. Whatever it is that he has bothered you. Whatever it is that has clamped you and struggled you for a long time. I am telling you today that God is able. There is no mountain that you cannot climb. He is able. And he is not only able. But he is a rewarder of those that seek him. That means you don't work for God for crying. That means you don't work for God for nothing. You don't work for God for nothing. The Bible says, as he demands that you believe, he puts it upon himself to reward you for the effort of believing. And so when you believe, 
Then you put God at an obligation to act on your behalf and not only to act on your behalf but to reward you. And so God is a rewarder and he's a rewarder of those that seek him. And they seek him diligently. That means wanajitorea muhanga. They give themselves fully. They seek God fully. They are saying, God is my priority. When I look at things, when I evaluate things, God is my number one. I see my money, but it becomes secondary to God. I look at my wealth, it becomes secondary to God. I look at everything else and it becomes secondary. Because God is my number one. Because when I make God my number one, God has promised us peace. And he has promised us perfect peace because we seek him. That means, and peace, the way it is used, it means God has promised us wholeness. All that we need for joy, all that we need for pleasure, God has promised us because he is faithful. When we believe and that he is a reward of those seek him, in the book of Matthew chapter 6, the Bible says, do not worry, do not worry. I, I am sure most of you have read about do not worry chapter of the Bible. The do not worry chapter is Matthew chapter 6. Don't worry about this because you look at the animals of the field, you look at the flowers and they don't worry. What the Bible is not saying, the, what the Bible says is that, do not sit like a flower and expect not to worry. What it means is this. Run from the flowers that are obeying the systems that God put in place for them to be the way they are. For you as a human being, God has put a system in your place and has given you an access to the divinity through your mind and in your heart. That means God demands your rationality. God demands your mind. That is why we worship God with our mind. God demands our emotions. That is why we worship God, even with our feelings. And we are excited about God. And he says, after you do, don't worry. But the priority must first be seeking the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And when you seek God and his righteousness, then all the other things will be added unto you. What are these other things? Whatever it is that is preventing you, that is coming in between you and what you desire. The Bible says them that they delight themselves in the Lord, that God will give them the desires of their heart. That means God, does, God has a plan for you. But although God has a plan for you, it is limited to your desires. Whatever God has for you, in heaven, I, I know God has good, good plans for you. Let me tell you, my friend, unless you desire it, it is not in heaven. You must desire it. You must conceptualize it in your mind. And after you conceptualize it, then you ask God by faith. And then God will give it to you. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. What is righteousness? Let me give you a definition of righteousness. Righteousness is doing that which is good for you and which pleases God. Good for you and it pleases God. And what is good for you? What is good for you, it is your faith in God. Because whatever it is that you do without faith, the Bible calls it sin. Can you imagine that? I hope I'm not getting complicated. I am saying, whatever it is that you do, and it is not of faith, in your eating and drinking, it is, that is why we pray for our food. The Bible says, whatever you do, in word and in deed, do it all for the glory of God. And do not live in deception. Do not live in deception. Finally, the Bible says in the book of John chapter 8 and verse 32. They shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. 
Free to do what? Free to prosper. Free to increase. Free to enjoy your blessings. Not bound, but free. But in order for you to be set free, in order for you to enjoy, you must be honest with yourself. Call your problems, problems. Call your problems, challenges. Call your problems, the opportunity God is giving you to manifest himself in your life. Without problems, I would never have grown up. I would still be a baby. But I had problems. I needed to walk. I needed to move from one place to another. I fell many times. You can't believe it. But I fell many times. But every time I fell, I stood up and walked until I could run. When I ran, I started doing other things. Why? Because for whatever I did, I am doing to overcome a challenge. And so problems are not bad. Problems are the training school for you to be able to access your blessings. When you solve somebody's problem, then God meets you at the point of your need. And let me tell you that our God is God. And whatever it is that you desire in your heart, whatever it is in a, is an inconvenience, God does not want it in your life. He wants to set you free. And to be honest is to look at that conversation. The conversation in the book of John. How many years were the children of Israel slaves in Egypt? 430 years. If you read that passage, the conversation between Jesus and the Jews, they are saying, we are children of Abraham. We have never been slaves. And it is written in the Bible. For you to read, so that you can know you can live a deceptive life. But when you know the truth, and the truth sets you free, then you can prosper, you can increase, you can access whatever it is that you desire in Jesus' name. Why? And our God is not a respecter of persons. Whatever he has done for me, he can do for you. Whatever he has done for you, he can do for me. I am here to tell you this. Whatever it is, that is your challenge today. Whatever it is, that is your problem today. That the God of heaven is here. And his power is right here to deliver you and to set you free. This is your hour and moment of breakthrough. This is your moment of healing. This is your moment of deliverance. This is your moment of resolution. This is a moment of reconciliation between you and your children. This is a the, the moment of reconciliation between you and your mother and your father. This is a time for the children to go back to their fathers and the fathers to go back to their sons. This is a time for you to prophesy. This is a time for you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. This is a time for you to receive all the promises of God for your life. Because God wants to bless you and to increase you. I want us to rise up. And as we rise up, if you are sick in your body, if you are sick in your body, I want you today to receive your healing. And not just to say, I had a headache and it is gone. That is good. Or I was feeling and it is. I am telling you that God is ready to perform miracles in our midst. God is ready to touch you. God is ready to heal that tumor. God is ready to heal that tumor. God is ready to heal that cancer. God is ready to heal that AIDS. God is ready to do the impossible in the eyes of men. And so if you are sick and in, your, in our midst, please raise up your hand. Raise up your hand wherever you are. Raise up your hand because our God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Whatever he did 2,000 years ago, he's ready to do for you now. I want you to come forward. I want you to, to make a move to the altar. Make a move to the altar. Make a move to the altar. 
Because our God wants to heal you. I gave a testimony in the morning that after I left here the other time, I was stopped in the streets by two people differently. And they told me, Pastor, when you came and prayed for me, when you invited us to the altar, I received my healing. I received my deliverance. And so I have come today. And I am telling you, today is your day of healing. Today is your time of deliverance. It doesn't matter how long. The sickness has regard in your body. Today is your day of healing. In Jesus' name. In Jesus, I want somebody here to, when I anoint them with oil, I want them to turn around and give room to move them around, move them around, shovel them around. No, I don't want you to go back. I only want you to give room. In the name of Jesus, receive your hearing. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing. In the name of Jesus, Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. 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 Be thou healed in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing in the name of Jesus. Receive your healing. Receive your healing. Be thou delivered. In Jesus' name, receive your healing. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, receive your healing. 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 Be thou healed in Jesus' name. Be thou healed. Be thou healed. Be thou healed. Be thou healed. In Jesus' name, receive your healing. In Jesus' name, receive your healing. In Jesus' name, receive your healing. In Jesus' name, in the name of Jesus, receive your healing. 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 In Jesus' name, receive your healing. In Jesus' name, receive your healing. In Jesus' name, receive your healing. By his stripes, we are healed. By his stripes, we are healed. By the stripes of Jesus, 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 we are healed. In Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. By the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. By the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. We have access to our health. In Jesus' name. By the stripes of Jesus Christ, we are healed. By the stripes of Jesus, 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 we are healed. In the name of Jesus, we are healed. In the name of Jesus, receive your healing. 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 Be thou restored in Jesus' name. Be thou restored in Jesus' name. He be thou healed in Jesus' name. The Bible says, as Jesus moved in Galilee, in the book of Matthew chapter 4 and verse 23. The Bible says, he healed all their diseases. Somebody say all. Somebody say all. Whatever diseases you had, whatever ailments you had, whatever pain you had, 
It is gone. It is gone in Jesus' name. Today is your day of deliverance. Today is your day of healing. Today you have been set free. It shall be said on that day, on that day, the power of God was present to heal them. Receive your healing in Jesus' name. Now, in our midst, up there and down here, I want to pray for you. You may go back and sit down. I want to pray for you up there and down here. You have been living God for your breakthrough. You have been struggling with your children. You have been struggling with alcoholism in your family. You have been struggling with witchcraft in your family. The Lord mentioned it to me that I need to call those things. You have been struggling with witchcraft in your family. I want to break the power of witchcraft in your family in Jesus' name. Because I have the Lord spoke to me that people have been living lies because they have almost dismissed the powers that continue to, to break their families. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you wherever you are. Raise up your hand if you need that prayer. Raise your hand I am breaking the power of witchcraft. I am setting your families free in Jesus' name. Father, in Jesus' name, I come as an anointed of the Most High God. I come against every power of witchcraft. I come with authority and I break demonic powers and strongholds that are in families tormenting them from generation to generation. I break them now in Jesus' name. I declare that the people in this house, they shall be freed from those curses. They shall be de de delivered from those spells in the name of Jesus. Receive your freedom. The truth is this, that who the Son sets free is free indeed and you are free indeed go back home go back home and tell them you are different go and tell them we have burnt the altars I did not have time for us to bring all those hirises and burn them we will not do that today but I want to tell you friends I have been anointed for a time as this to challenge the powers of witchcraft in our land. To challenge the powers of witchcraft in our land. And it shall be so in Jesus' name. Those that are believing God for their businesses, raise up your hands. Raise up your hands. Your businesses, whatever other issue you are believing God for. Father, in Jesus' name, see the hands that are raised, O oh God. Because they are believing you for breakthrough. They are believing you for breakthrough. I speak freedom to prosper. I speak the power of God for them to prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. My Father and my God, meet each one of them at the point of their needs. Because you are able to do exceedingly, abundantly above that which we believe for. In Jesus' name, receive your miracle in Jesus' name. Receive your miracle in Jesus' name. Receive your miracle in Jesus' name.